All right, so we're going to do a webinar on animating spiders this morning. So what I would like you all to do is um, to follow along, because I'm going to demonstrate how to do this. Um, and this will include downloading a free rig from the internet and then doing some animation in Maya. So I've got Maya already open here. I've got the um, 2020 version, the student license version of Maya. And um, <clears throat> so we're going to be using that to animate with. And we're also going to be using this particular rig, which is free and can be downloaded from the website Creative Crash. So I'm just going to open up Google on my Mac here. And I'm going to go raw rig creative crash. <laughs> so please, could everyone who's following this rig um, have a look at um, this? And actually, if you click on my blog, this is the Animation Apprentice blog, you'll see that this is one of the rigs that I recommend for using. And there's a link there where you can download raw at um, creative crash. And so there we go. And so what you want to do is download this rig. Now, if I click on, if I go into, um, if I click on download, it's going to want me to sign in, right? Uh, this is the website. It used to be called Creative Crash. Now it's called highend3d.com. But if you sign in, you may have to register. Uh, oh, doesn't like my password. Um, I shall worry about that later. Um, I'm not too worried about people hacking my account and downloading free rigs because anybody can do it. So I'm not sure there would be any advantage to that. But this is the rig that you're after. And I'm now logged in. See a little picture of me there. So go ahead and download. And I may, it is possible that for any of you who cannot download the rig, that I can actually upload the rig here, and I don't think I can actually do that. Can I do it? I don't believe I can. So there isn't a facility here where I can um, upload a file, regrettably. Um, so is, has, have you all managed to um, find Ra at Creative Crash? Because that's the key thing. That's what you want. Am I allowed through this interface to post a link anywhere. Can I, how do I answer questions here? Not sure I can, can I? No, I don't believe that I can. So, um, <clears throat> okay, so I can, you can, I can answer questions that you guys post, but I cannot, um, uh, uh, answer them. I can answer them verbally, but I can't um, type uh, an answer in, in the command line. Okay, so I'm just going to keep going forwards and um, assume, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> excuse, assume that um, <coughs> that you can download this this free rig. Excuse my cough. I have a little bit of a cough this morning. And one other, sound, one other problem that you may face, um, and I apologize in advance for this, is my Mac has been playing up lately, and every now and again, the screen goes black. And the only way to get the thing working again is to close the screen and reopen the machine and hope that that forces the machine to um, give me my login screen again. Uh, and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. So I'm kind of crossing my fingers and hoping that we don't have that problem over the next two hours. But if the screen goes black and you can't hear me, it's because I've got a hardware problem. I think it's a hardware problem. Or it might be a software problem. <laughs> but anyway, it's a problem. Uh, so if I just disappear, then just wait patiently. I will come back. Uh, it sometimes takes up to five minutes to get back in, but it, I do get back in eventually. OK, so now we've got the raw rig. So that's the rig. Um, and so what we want to do is open up Maya and then get that rig. Well, actually, first thing we do is once we've opened up Maya, as I'm sure you guys all know, if you've got Maya open, if you've used Maya before, is you go File, Project Window, 
Uh, and that's where you go to create a new project. So file project window. And then it's going to give you um, an option to create a new project. And you can see the last project I created was on the 12th of October, where I did a little video tutorial on how to animate a blink. So I'm now going to do a new one, and then we're going to call it view spider underscore my hate spaces. So you must have underscores. View spider, and what's the date today? 19th of October 2020. So I'm going to click accept, and that will now accept this new project with this new title. So we've now created a project in Maya, but we have not yet set to the project. And the way Maya works is you need to, first of all, create a project and then set to it. Otherwise, Maya does not know where you are working. So the next stage is to go File, Set Project. So we went to File Project Window to create the project. Next stage is File Set Project. So I'm going to click on that. And I'm taking this, I'm generally speaking, going to take this tutorial pretty slow today. We've got two hours, we've got loads of time. The animation isn't going to take us that long. And I'd rather take it nice and slow, meaning that everyone can keep up um, and make this nice and easy for everyone. So I'm going to go Set Project. And you can see, there we go, there's my project, View Spider, 19th of October 2020 and I'm going to click set. And then we I'm just going to go back to the chat, just make sure that everybody's good. Somebody says, yeah, found the site logging in. I can't see your names annoyingly, so um, it doesn't tell me who, who you are. So I'm afraid if I don't, if I don't reply to you uh, personally, it's not because I don't want to, it's just because this particular interface doesn't allow me to see who is asking the question or indeed what their name is. Now, if I go back to um, Maya, <clears throat> I now need to get the um, uh, the rig into into Maya. And so, and the way I'm going to do that is having downloaded the rig, I'm going to open it up. Now, I've already got it here. I've got the um, uh, I've got a folder with all the stuff in it. So, I'm just going to go to my assets folder and. Uh, with the raw spider. Um, now, actually, this is a slightly older version. This is a newer version of the rig that I've actually adapted slightly. So why don't I open up a, a the older version, which is the one that you guys have downloaded, so that we're both using exactly the same kind, or exactly the same rig. So I'm just going to go to um, uh, bugs. You can see I've got a big collection of rigs here. Uh, spider, there we go, Rada version one, that's the one we want, control C, so I'm just control Cing that to copy it, and then I'm going to go to my um, documents folder, so documents, Maya, projects, view spider, scenes, and that's where I want to put the spider that we've just downloaded, so we just downloaded Ra. We're going to pop it in here, control V, and uh, there it goes. So we've got that in the folder. Good. Okay. So now let's um, now let's do something. Let's go. Let's go now, and we can either open the scene or import the rig into the scene. So let's go file import. There's the rig. There's Ra. And I can go import, and we should now have Ra in the um, in the shot. Now, one of the odd things about this rig, I mean, it's a really nice little rig, but it's slightly peculiar. Um, and ordinarily, when you are um, uh, when you're making a rig, you you make the rig itself, the model, out of polygons. And then the control curves would be made out of NURBS. But in this case, the control curves are actually partly made out of NURBS and partly made out of polygons, which is slightly annoying um, because it means we can't turn off select surface objects in Maya, which we would normally want to do uh, uh, so that we didn't, by mistake, keyframe the um, geometry of the rig. So that's why I've got a, an updated version of the rig uh, but since I can't share that with you today, I'm just using the old version, and we'll just work around that particular problem. So let's set up our screen so that 
we can animate this thing and um, uh, make it work. So we are going to animate this spider walking. And what we want to do is set up our screen in the kind of traditional um, animators uh, interface. So I'm going to go panels, layouts, three panes, split top. That's panels, layouts, three panes, split top. And there we go. And that, this is the traditional animal, uh, animator's view. Underneath, we want to go panels, layouts, sorry, panels, panel, graph, editor. Panels, panel, graph, editor. And if I click on that, I will get the graph editor down there. And I'm not going to go into the graph editor in any great detail today, because uh, I hope you guys know what it is. If you don't know what the graph editor is, then don't worry about it too much. Um, you will have to learn it um, in the course of studying Maya. It is basically a uh, <clears throat> digital visualization of time and space in, in 3D, showing how Maya is calculating the various control curves and the keyframes at different frames in Maya. And if that sounds complicated, it kind of is. It takes a while to master the graph editor. But all you need to know for now is it's a method of calculating time and distance. And we will use it for animating this spider. Let me just go back to the main screen to make sure um, uh, any questions? Great. Student following along from your iPad. Can you actually, I didn't, Kai says um, he's following on his iPad. That's really cool. I didn't actually know that you could run Maya on an iPad. That's really good to know. Um, I don't know. How would you run Maya on an iPad? Because you can't, you would need a three button mouse at least in order to be able to do it. Uh, but anyway, that's good. So, okay. So let's go back to Maya. And we've got our three screw. We've got our graph editor underneath. And up here on the, on the right-hand side, I'm going to go panels, perspective, perspective. Panels, perspective, perspective. And there we go. We've got our perspective view of the spider. And with Maya, you need to be able to do three things. Um, and you, you hold down the shift key with your left thumb. And then with your left mouse button, you need to be able to dolly. With your right mouse button, you need to be able to move. And then with your middle mouse button, you need to be able to zoom. Now, I'm using a Wacom tablet, which is much better than a mouse. And I highly recommend using a Wacom for Maya. The mouse works, but over time, the mouse will give you, uh, most likely will give you problems with uh, repetitive strain injuries, sometimes called RSI, sometimes called carpal tunnel syndrome given lots of different medical names, all of which mean slightly different things. But for our purposes, all you need to know is that over the long term, the mouse is bad for you, uh, whereas the Wacom tablet is not. So if you want to enjoy a long and successful and happy career in this industry, I recommend getting a Wacom tablet, or indeed any tablet. Wacom are the market leaders, but there are other people who make them too. Uh, in the left-hand panel up here, I'm going to go Panels, Orthographic, Side. So I've got my spider in the Perspective view on the left, in the Orthographic side view, sorry, Perspective view on the right, Orthographic side view on the left, and Graph Editor underneath. Now this is your standard animator's setup. This is standard animator's layout, and you will see that in studios across the land, or except you won't anymore because everybody's working from home. But before COVID, that's how it was. And if you, you can save that by going down to this little um, panel layout dubri on the left, and then right click and go save current layout. So right click on the little thingamajig here on the left, right click, save current layout. And I've already got one saved that looks like this. It's called animation. So I'm not going to go ahead and save it again, but you can go ahead and do that. Then under here, under the show window, go ahead and turn everything off. So go show none. 
and our spider will disappear. So we can't see it. But it hasn't gone away, we've just turned it off. So then go back to show and just turn on polygons. And also, NURBS curves. So polygons and NURBS curves. That's all we want to see on for now. We don't need anything else. All the rest of the stuff, <clears throat> locators, particles, end cloth, follicles, hair, so we don't need any of that. It just gets in the way. All we need is polygons and NURBS curves. So that's all we need for now. And then go ahead and do the same thing on the left-hand panel. So that's show none, show polygons, and NURBS curves. Polygons and NURBS curves. Um, <clears throat> OK, once we've done that, let's have a little bit of theory. So I'm just going to minimize, uh, well, what am I going to do? I'm going to go and find my PowerPoint. Here we go. So we have a little PowerPoint there. I'm going to talk you through the mechanics of a spider walk walking. So let's go select our slides. So here, there's the rig, which you guys have all downloaded, Raspider Spider version 1. You can see he's got a, <coughs> a smooth mode. You can go to the high poly version or the low poly version. We'll stick with low poly because <coughs> it's going to run faster in Maya. So where do you begin? Now, when you're animating spiders in motion, um, or indeed anything, you want to collect reference. Now, we're not going to spend a lot of time on reference today because we don't have time. We've only, this is a two-hour tutorial, um, and we'll need the time for animation. But if you were doing this properly, professionally, for a studio, frame store, MPC, whatever, you're going to gather a lot of reference. You're going to, you're going to download tons of stuff from YouTube, Vimeo, wherever you can find it, and spiders moving, and really dig into the mechanics of it. But I'm going to give you a formula for animating spiders. Now, why do you want to animate spiders? Um, and the answer is because they are actually surprisingly easy to animate. Now, they look complicated. They're they move fast, and you've got these eight legs all little worry all whirring away together, and they're going blah, 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 blah. Um, and you can't see the mechanics of it because it's all too quick. But luckily enough, we've got a simple formula to animate spiders. I'm going to show you how to do it. And... Um, there is lots of work out there animating spiders, right? On visual effects movies, Harry Potter, uh, The Hobbit, Lord of the Rings. There's always big giant spiders trying to eat someone. Um, I hope you're not um, uh, frightened of spiders. I hope no one is arachnophobic. If you are, stop right now. You probably have already stopped right now because we're going to be spending two, the next two hours with these little beasties. Now, the formula for animating the spiders is taken from the Animator's Survival Kit. Now, this is a book that all animators should have on their shelf. Um, if you don't get hold of a copy, uh, whatever you spend on your education as an animator, whether you spend, uh, you know, whether you get it for free at school or you go to CalArts for $60,000 a year for four years, this book is the best 25 euros that you will spend on anything. There is more information and wisdom in this book than there is in the heads of most of your professors, including me. So go ahead and get yourself a copy of the Animator's Survival Kit. This particular tutorial is taken from the Expanded Edition. That's the Expanded Edition. And that was the version that came out, and I think in about 2008, and it has all the creature stuff that wasn't in the original edition. So get yourself a copy of the Expanded Edition. And the secret to a spider walking is that even though it's got eight legs, it's really, um, the way to think of it is four pairs of legs. And the front pair of legs, which is where we will begin, animate just like any two-legged walk, really just like people. Um, even Because the basic mechanics of a walk are the same, no matter how many legs you've got. Then the second set of legs counteracts the front set of legs, right? That's, the, that's, that's what happens. First set of legs walk like a normal two-legged walk. Second set of legs counteract the front ones. Third set of legs mimics the front set of legs. And then the fourth set of legs mimics the second set. So everything is offset. So one of the things you're going to learn how to do in this tutorial is learn how to offset curves, which is a very useful skill to know how to do in Maya and will give you superpowers when you are doing creature animation. By the way, just a note on this, 
I learned how to do this quite late in my animation career. I was working on a movie called uh, Bedtime Stories with Adam Sandler, which was not a, not a great movie. It's not one of the highlights of my career. But we were working at Cinesite at the time. I was, anim I was working at Cinesite. And we, the team, were animating a thing called a snot monster, which was basically a spider that was swimming through space. The snot monster. And it was something, I think it was, I can't remember what it did in the story, but we had to animate it through space. And, and I learned this system for, for, for animating pairs of legs and then offsetting them when I was working on the snot monster at Cinesite on uh, Bedtime Stories. And that was back in um, around about 2007, somewhere around there. So there's the rig, which hopefully you've all downloaded now. So you've got the rig. And this is what we're going to do to begin with. We're going to set our timeline in Maya from 1 to 17. We're going to turn on our infinity curves. Uh, we're going to animate the front leg on a 16-frame cycle. And at frame 1, that will be the front leg contact. Frame 9 will be the front leg in the back or rear position. And then frame 17 is going to be the same as frame 1. So it's a cycle, so that means the, the first position and the last position must be the same. Um, then we will add a breakdown pose at frame 13, where the leg rises up as it comes forwards. And we should have a leg walking by then. And then basically, we're going to take that curve and copy it throughout the rig, offsetting it by eight frames. Um, and I think we should go and start doing some animation now, and we'll come back to this. Actually, before we do that, before we do that, let me just run you through this. And this is um, this is a little video taken from the Animator Survival Kit. It's free at YouTube, so we're not violating any copyright here. It's a free download. Uh, it's a little taster. Just shows you how um, how the um, uh, spider walks, and I'll just play you this now. Now for an eight-legged walk. It may look complex, but it's actually very simple. The front legs work like a two-legged walk. The next two legs counteract the front ones. The third set mimic the front ones. Fourth set, mimic the second set. So it's like two four-legged animals joined together. Great. Okay, so that is the um, uh, <coughs> animator survival kit formula, which is basically what we're going to do. So we're we're taking the formula from the animator survival kit, and we're applying that um, to. Um, oh, by the way, just um, just to show you what you can do with this, this is a really lovely piece of animation uh, that was done by one of our tutors at Escape Studios. This is by. This is not by me. This is by Lee Caller. Um, and he did this. He did this lovely piece of animation, essentially using this, the exact same formula that I'm showing you now. And this is what he did with it.
Isn't that awesome and cool? Um, well, anyway, I, I love showing that. It's such an imaginative and creative piece of work. Uh, and it's really all about the camera. Um, um, Lee's really, really good cinematographer, natural cinematographer. And I uh, love the way he introduces all the different spiders there, all kind of doing battle with each other and, and then facing off and then finally ending up in the skeleton. Okay, so back to Maya, which is where we actually need to be to do some work today. So I'm going to set my timeline from 1 to 17, because it's a 16-frame cycle, and so we start at frame 1. We never start at 0 in Maya. There is no frame 0 in films. There is a 0 in math. But in film, we start at frame 1. So that means that in order to have a 16-frame cycle, we finish at frame 17. And then we need to actually animate this thing. So now what you will see if you open up your... Um, if I hit spacebar, you can see that we've got our um, leg there. And if I press W, we've got the leg selected. And I can move that leg up or along or sideways. And the main thing we're interested in is the, is the uh, lateral movement here in, in, in Z. The blue, um, sorry, yellow, the yellow handle. In, uh, in Maya. So I'm going to go ahead and go to frame one and set a keyframe. Actually, before we do that, before we do that, let's go ahead and... Um, nope, no, nope, I'm going to do it this way. Let's make it simple. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and select with that little box selected. And, and you've got to have select surface objects turned on to do this because the person who rigged this rig <coughs> made this with polygons, not with NURBS curves. So this is actually a polygon, not a NURBS curve. So you have to have select surface objects turned on in order for this to work. Um, so we're now going to press S. Bingo! And we've made a keyframe. And because we know that frame 17 is the same as frame 1, we're also going to press S at frame 17. Yes, like that. So I've got a keyframe at 1 and 17. And then if we go back to our PowerPoint, remember, because um, we're animating the front leg, so we've turned on our tie line from frame 1 to 17. We're going to turn on, we'll do that in a minute, turn on our infinity curves. Frame 1, not front leg contact. Frame 17, front leg contact. Frame 9, front leg in back position. So let's go to the back position. So we're going to go to frame 9 in the timeline. And I'm going to move the leg around about two grid units. Um, one, two grid units backwards, like that, S. And now if I press play, it's going to look like it's scrubbing the floor, like that. Now, if you've just opened Maya for the first time, and you're not familiar with Maya, and you haven't changed the settings, you might get something that looks like this, where Maya, where Maya is basically playing this back as fast as it can, furiously scrubbing the floor. You don't want that. So go back down to the little orange guy running from the giant wheel, which weirdly is the preferences button. Um, and under playback speed, make sure that that is set to 24 frames per second. 24 frames per second, that is the standard, that's, that's the film playback speed was established years ago in the beginning of the 20th century for the playback speed for film, and we still pretty much stick with that today. Uh, and if you want to know why it's 24 and not 23 or 25, look it up at Wikipedia. <laughs> but it's very handy for us that it is 24 because it's very easily subdivisible, which is very handy. So I'm going to click Save, and I also need to make sure that under Animation that my, uh, my tangents are set to auto, which you probably have got because that's what it comes in by default in Maya. So I'm going to close out preferences and just press play. And now we've got the foot, that foot scrubbing the floor. So if I hit spacebar, we can now see what that foot is doing. And the curve that we're chiefly interested in is this one here, translate Z. And if I scrub through this, you'll see that that foot is coming backwards and scrubbing 
uh, scrubbing the floor. Now, what we're actually doing is we're animating a walk on the spot. And at some point, not now, but later, we're going to grab the world control on the spider and move the spider forwards. I'm just going to press Z to undo that. So what we want to do is animate the feet going backwards. But because the forward motion of the spider will be a constant rate, the backwards motion of the legs must also be a constant rate. And what the graph editor is showing us here is that the spider, spider's leg is easing out and then easing in again in Z. And we do not want that. We want it traveling at a constant rate. So I'm going to click on Translate Z there. And then I'm going to select these keyframes. I've got that one selected. I'm selecting it by drawing a little square around it and letting it highlight. And then I draw a little square around this guy here and then move it with my middle mouse button so that it's pointing at the other one. And then I do the same thing on this keyframe, draw a little square around that, little square around the handle, as it's called, middle mouse, and move it like that. And now that leg is going to travel backwards at a constant rate. Right? because the graph editor is calculating time and distance. So over these eight frames, it is traveling. You see, here's the center line. It's traveling one, two grid units backwards, which we knew that because we had the foot travel two grid units up there, approximately. So we know it's traveling two grid units, but the graph editor is helpfully showing us the same thing, one, two grid units backwards, traveling at a constant rate. And then when it goes backwards, it is traveling, it's slightly easing out and easing in again, which is fine because that's the point when the foot is traveling forwards. And then I'm gonna take this keyframe here, again, drag selecting it, again, drag select, selecting the handle, and I'm just gonna pull that over like that so that it's pointing in the same direction as this curve here. And I'll show you why I'm doing that in a minute. So now I'm going to select the top of the node. This is a node in Maya, which is a sort of thing. Uh, and I'm going to select the top of the node up there in the graph editor and drag select everything down here. So everything is highlighted. And then I'm going to turn on infinity curves. I'll show you what infinity curves do right now. They are a very powerful thing in Maya, particularly when you're animating creatures. So I'm going to go to curves, oops, pre-infinity cycle. So what did it do there? Did something weird there. Well, I'm just going to hit Z. I've just undone that. Z is your friend in Maya, or Z if you're in North America. So select your curves. Curves. Sorry, why am I behaving oddly here? Curves pre-infinity cycle. Curves pre-infinity cycle. Go ahead and click on that. <gasps> infinity curves before infinity. And then go curves post-infinity cycle. And as long as you've got infinity curves turned on under view, and it looks like I have, yours probably won't be turned on. You've probably go ahead, got to go ahead and make them turn on, so tick that box. You will now see the infinity curves. And what that does is it tells Maya to do the same thing to infinity and beyond, both after your keyframes and before your keyframes. So it means that we can then replicate this motion to infinity uh, when we animate the spider walking forwards in space. So the power of this won't become apparent for a little while. But trust me on this, turn on infinity curves and Maya is your oyster. Now, the next thing we need to do let me just go back to the chat to make sure that everyone's 
keeping up okay with this. Uh, somebody asks um, or how to duplicate an object with the rig. I'm not sure what that question means exactly. Uh, if you want to duplicate anything, you just go Control D in Maya. I could show you that very simply. If you, if we, if we wanted to um, create, say, if I go create polygon primitives cube, there's a cube. If I go Control D, I've now got two cubes. So I've got cube A or cube one and cube two, and I can go Control D again, and it'll just keep multiplying them. I'm going to delete them because I don't need them. But Control D is your friend in Maya. Control D is duplicate. <clears throat> now, someone else says, I'm not running Maya, I'm just watching. That's absolutely fine. And then someone else says, is a Wacom tablet useful for animators? Yes, it absolutely is. Um, uh, if I go to um, um, Animation Apprentice, my um, website, uh, if I go to, there's my blog. Um, and if I search for it's my online school, if I search for Wacom, Wacom should show me, yeah, how to create the ideal animation workstation. So um, this is um, a workstation. I can't remember whose workstation this was, but you can see that somebody's doing an exercise up there and then they're watching the tutorial down there. Um, so they've got two screens, which is really, really helpful if you're trying to follow a tutorial. And then you really do want to get rid of the mouse. Don't, don't have the mouse. That's um, my workstation. It's, um, it's not particularly ideal, actually. I'm not working exactly the same way as that now. But that's more or less. You can see my Wacom tablet. It's a very old one there. Um, and then the um, uh, my um, running Maya up here. So... Uh, a Wacom tablet will save your wrists. If you don't have a Wacom tablet, if you're typing with a mouse, try and you know do all this stuff. Sit up straight. Try and replicate something like this, so that you the, you you have a good um, uh, a good posture and a good position when you're at the computer. Obviously, take regular breaks. Try and stretch. You know all the usual stuff, but. Uh, the, but it is really important to take care of your physical health because even though what we're doing doesn't appear to be strenuous, it is in fact, the repetitive clicking of the mouse does in fact put strain on your body. Okay, so now we've got our, um, our foot going backwards. Let's go back to the PowerPoint and see what we need to do next. So the next thing to do is add a breakdown at frame 13, where the leg rises up in the y-axis as it comes forwards. We're then going to press play, and we should have one leg walking. So let's go ahead and do that. So frame 13, I'm going to lift that leg up in the air. Come on, leg. There we go. So the leg is being lifted off the ground. Press S. Actually, I probably didn't even need to do that. I won't, I'll not press S because it's automatically keyframed the Y translation. So let's go to translate Y, and I've got a keyframe there. And if I now press play, you can see the foot is kind of um, uh, cleaning the kitchen floor, but it's lifting itself up as it comes before, forwards. Because remember, the... the um, a spider is kind of on an imaginary treadmill there. Now, one thing you'll notice is that the foot is actually dipping below the surface of the ground. We don't really want that to happen. So there's this little slider up here called foot up down. And if you select that in the channel box, you've got to have the, um, uh, the thing, whoops, the, the control curve selected, this guy here. So for the foot, and then select foot up and down there in the uh, channel box. And then you can, if we, if we do this in the orthographic side view, if you use your middle mouse and slide, you can make that foot go up slightly. And that will stop the foot appearing to penetrate the ground plane like that. 
So you can also enter the, va the, man the, the value up here manually. So if you just type in four up there in foot up down at frame nine, you'll get that foot nice and flat so that it's not penetrating the uh, ground plane. But now we've got one foot scrubbing the ground. All right. So you'll be relieved to hear that's pretty much all the animation we're going to have to do today. <laughs> There's not a lot left. The rest of it is just copying and pasting. Well, we're going to have to do one more animation curve, but that's it. It's really simple. And I love tutorials like this because this shows you how to get a really sophisticated result with some really simple animation. So I'm going to click on the top node there on that foot, zoom out a little bit. I'm going to grab all of those curves that we've just animated from 1 to 16. And then I'm going to copy and paste it. So I'm going to go edit, copy, edit, copy. And then I've got the curves copied. So I'm going to go to the other foot. That's this one over here, the right foot. Go to frame one, press S to copy it. Then select that keyframe. And then go edit, paste, edit, paste, and press A. And now, if I press play, I've got two feet scrubbing the floor, hopefully doing the identical motion. And it looks like they are identical. But I've got to turn on infinity curves on this leg in order to make it work. So drag, select all your keyframes, and then go just like we did before, curves, pre-infinity cycle, curves post infinity cycle now if i press play you're not going to see any difference in the animation but you can see those infinity curves showing up there in the graph editor so now we need to offset these curves now we know let's go back to the powerpoint that we've got two legs walking uh, this is the step we've done Copy the translation curves, paste them onto the front right leg. Make sure you turn infinity curves on. Now we've got to slide the curves by eight frames. And it doesn't matter which direction we slide these curves in. We can slide them forwards or backwards. The result is the same. So I'm going to slide them forwards so we don't have any minus numbers in the graph editor. Whoops. So I've now got to drag these guys. Make sure I'm in the move tool. I am in the move tool. And then go, um, I'm holding down the shift key with my left thumb. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I've slid those along eight frames. And now look what happens. <gasps> Magic. Amazing. I've got two feet of the spider working in opposition to each other. And the effect I have is the same as what we saw in the video, these two legs counteracting one another. So spider walking. So now we've got that, we can go ahead and paste this onto all the other legs. So the rest of the tutorial is pretty much a copy and paste job. So let's select this third leg, or rather the second leg on the left. And it's named second leg, R underscore, so right second leg, R underscore second leg. Let's go back to frame one, set a keyframe, select that keyframe, edit, paste. Press A in the graph editor, Press play, and you'll see that that second leg is doing the same thing as the first leg. Oh, actually, there's something in there we don't want, and that is I actually need to take out that foot up and down because I can see that that is looking kind of dodgy there. So let's get rid of that keyframe. There we go. 
So the foot is traveling backwards, but it's doing so at the same speed as the front leg. I mean, at the, at the same um, timing as the front leg, which we do not want. So again, let's select the top of the node. Uh, Raw spider, uh, second leg. So I've got that selected. And then I'm going to drag select these keyframes. And then just like we did before, curves pre-infinity cycle, curves post-infinity cycle. And now I'm with those keyframes selected, I'm going to move it forwards eight frames. So holding down the shift key with my left hand and middle mouse drag, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And now look what happens. So now the second, the right second leg, it shouldn't be right, it should be left. Oh well, anyway, I guess it's right if you look at the spider underneath. Um, anyway, that leg is now offsetting the leg in front. So now that we've done that, oh, and I should be saving my work, by the way. Save scene as. Very naughty not to save, because you never know when Maya will crash. Spider walk underscore version one. Uh, I'm going to save it as, you can, I can see that that's a, that's a .mb file. So Maya is defaulting to ASCII, but I want to save it in the same file type that it is, because um, um, that will means I can use increment and save. Save as, continue. There we go. OK. So we've saved our work. Let's go to the third leg. Back to frame one. Press S. Select that keyframe. Edit. Paste. Once again, we're going to have to take out, I'm just going to press A in the graph editor. We're going to have to take out that foot up and down because we don't actually need that. But now we've got that foot going backwards in offset to the one in front of it. And because this third leg is the same as the front leg, we actually don't need to do anything to that. We can just leave it. Oh no, that's not quite true. We need to turn on our R infinity curves. So select the keyframe. We may as well actually at this point um, turn on infinity curves for all of these legs. So let's go, I'm going to go ahead and shift select all the legs. So shift, 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 shift. So I've got all the legs selected. I'm going to press one at frame one. Um, and then da, 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 select all of them and go curves pre-infinity cycle, curves post-infinity cycle. And hopefully that will allow me to turn on infinity curves for all of them. So I won't have to keep doing this curve by curve. So let's go back to the third one. Have I successfully turned on infinity curves? Press A. Yes, I have. Now I'm going to do the fourth leg. Fourth leg along, frame one, press S, select that keyframe, edit, paste. Press A in the graph editor. Take out the um, foot roll, because we don't need it. And there we go. Now, you'll see there's a problem here, which is that that rear leg is now getting stretched out way too far. So if I press stop and now select translate Z, whoops, um, I can now see that what's happening is the, the leg is getting stretched out beyond the point at which uh, the rig was designed to stretch. And it looks ugly and we need to change it. Now I can just move that keyframe up a little bit like that to relax that. But the problem with that is that it will cause trouble for me later on. So I'm going to hit Z. And the reason being that all of these legs need to translate the same number of grid units backwards as all the other legs. 
because when we animate the spider forwards at the end with a forward translation on the world control, the backwards translation of the feet must cancel out exactly the forward translation on the world control. Those two values must be the same or else the feet will appear to slip on the ground. And we do not want that. So if I go back and select this rear foot, if I'm going to change that translate Z curve, I need to change it at frame 1 and 17 as well as frame 9. So what I want to do is take that curve, that whole curve, and then move it up slightly to relax that leg. And once I've done that and press play, I've got the leg moving. It's not stretching out, but it's still covering the same number of grid units as the other legs, which means that the feet won't slip when we add a forward translation later on. Now, I need to take this translate Z and offset it eight frames, so it's not doing the same thing as the foot in front. So I now need to move it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight frames back, uh, forwards. Ooh. That's not right. Oh, sorry. Um, okay, that was my mistake. So what we actually needed to do there was, um, uh, wait, let me just move that back up. There we go. So we re we've relaxed the leg. Um, but what I needed to do was select a whole top node. So I made a mistake. Apologies. Select the whole of the top node, select all of those keyframes, and then move them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight frames. I got that right. Yeah. There we go. Now it's working. So now the feet on the left hand side of the spider are all acting in opposition to one another. So let me just check the chat, just make sure that everybody's happy with that. No more questions. So I'm assuming that everyone's happy. Um, so I'm going to keep going and then we are going to do, 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 do. we're going to go and do this second foot on the right hand side. So back to frame one. Uh, press S and again, once again, edit, paste. And we don't need to do anything except we need to take out that foot up and down. So I'm going to lose that. But that foot should be offset from the first foot automatically, and it is. So let's go to the third foot. So that's this one here. Press 1. Make sure it's keyframed. Edit, paste. Press A. It's doing the same thing as the second foot. <coughs> Drag, select those curves, offset them by eight frames. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And it's all working beautifully. Go ahead, select the last foot. Go to frame one, drag select that keyframe, edit paste, press A. And again, we've got the same problem. The, um, the leg is stretching out too far. So I'm going to take that translate Z curve. I'm going to move it up, gently relax it. And I actually don't need to do anything else. Oops. I actually don't need to do anything else to it. 
Right, so now we've got all the spider legs walking, working, walking and working, and they're all acting in opposition to each other. Now, if you look at this animation, which is looking okay now, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to save it, increment and save. Um, uh, increment and save, you will see that the spider is walking along. Uh, the legs are all moving, but the body is not. So let's go ahead and add some up and down motion to the spider. So I'm going to go in and select the control that's called main move above raw. We've got no keyframes on it yet. So I'm going to go to frame one, and I'm going to keyframe raw on main move. Let's go back to our PowerPoint, tell us what to do. We've done all the legs, fourth set of legs. So now we've got to add some body motion. So here's the formula. Body up at frame one, body down at frame five, body up at frame nine, down at 13, up at 17. So that's the formula. So let's just go to make this nice and simple. With the main mover selected, let's go and hit set a keyframe at frame one, set a keyframe at frame nine, set a keyframe at frame 17. So we've got the spider keyframed at one, nine, and 17. Then at frame five, let's add the down position. So I'm just going to move the spider down a little bit at frame 5, and then move the spider down a little bit at frame 13. Now the curve we're interested in is translate Y. Now we want the up and down motion to be approximately the same, basically going down uh, half a grid unit, or is it one grid unit? Yeah, half a grid unit in the Y axis. <laughs> and if I press play, the spider's now kind of bobbing up and down. Which is fine, that's what we wanted. But let's select the top of the node without double clicking on it. And let's drag select those keyframes. And once again, let's go curves pre-infinity cycle, curves post-infinity cycle to turn on our infinity curves. And the reason we want to do that is that this spider is fine. We've got the body moving, but there's no overlapping action on the appendages. So the spider's bum, the thorax, or whatever you call it, or maybe that's the thorax, I'm not very good at my spider terminology, and the feelers, the antennae, are both very stiff in relation to the main body. And we don't want that. So what we want to do is add some offset on the bits of the body that should be overlapping the main action. And the control we want is this one up here, and it's called hip. And if you middle mouse drag in the viewport, you'll see the spider's bum can move up and down as you slide hip around. So let's go to frame one in the timeline, and let's... Um, think about how we might offset that bottom. Let's go back to the uh, PowerPoint. Oops. Seems to have closed itself out. Yeah, we're at stage six, which is offset body parts. We need to offset the various body parts, such as the head, the abdomen, and the feelers, antennae, so they counter animate the main body motion. It's all about adding flexibility and overlapping action. So how do we do that? Well, <clears throat> in physics, remember uh, the basic rule of Isaac Newton's, uh, Isaac Newton's um, first law of um, motion is that every action has an equal and opposite reaction. <clears throat> every action has an equal and opposite reaction. So if the spider is traveling down at frame five, the spider's bum is going to tend to go up. So we can animate that hip control to move slightly upwards as the spider goes down. Spider goes up, hip goes down, spider goes down, hip goes up. So 
So I'm moving the bum upwards again. And if I now go and take a look at that control curve down there, hip, in the graph editor and press A, I've now got it's approximately the same on both sides. And now the bum is offsetting the main action of the spider moving, which is what we want. But it isn't quite right yet, because you can see it feels a little bit mechanical. It's kind of bobbing around there. So what we want to do, and again, this is the amazing power of infinity curves, is select this curve, just the hip control curve, drag select it, make sure it's all selected. You have to select all of these keyframes or it won't work. And I'm going to move those two frames to the right. One, two, like that. And now, actually, sorry, two frames to the left is what I want. One, two, so I'm going to go, that's back to zero. One, two frames to the left. And now look what happens. Is that not magical? So you've now got the spider's bum bobbing around behind the body because it's offset from the main motion of the body. So it feels like it's playing catch up, which is what it should feel like because it's like the tail of a horse or the fin of a, uh, a, 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 of a fish. It's slightly behind the main motion of the body. And now we can do the same thing for the feelers. So if I click on this star control on the, on the um, head of, of Ra, the one we want is right moo up and down, left moo up and down, and that animates these feelers up and down. So let's go back to frame one, uh, keyframe the feelers, keyframe them at frame nine, keyframe them at frame 17. Now go back to frame five. Once again, let's remember Isaac Newton, every action has an equal and opposite reaction. The spider is traveling down at frame five, so we want those feelers to go slightly up. Spider's traveling up at nine, feelers will go down. Spider's going down again at 13, feelers will go up. Press S, spacebar, make sure the feelers are doing more or less the same thing. at 5 and 13, and we get a curve that looks like that. Again, it looks better. It's got flexibility, but we've got the same problem we had with the bum, which is it feels stiff. So let's select right, move up and down, down here in the uh, graph editor. So we've just got those curves. And let's move that two frames to the left. One, two. Two frames to the left. Now, if I press play, it's not actually going to work. It's going to click. And the reason it clicks is because we haven't turned infinity curves on. So back up to the face control, the top node, drag, select those keyframes, curves, pre-infinity cycle, curves, post-infinity cycle. And now we're going to get a nice overlap and flexibility on those feelers. And we can actually select one of them. Let's go left move up and down, drag select all the curves and move them back one, whoops. Move them back one space further. And then we'll get the two feelers slightly offsetting one another. So they're not doing the exact same thing. And we can continue to do this to add flexibility. We can continue to add flexibility in the claws, in the, in the other bits of the rig. Um, and if you click there on the head control, you'll see that you can do various other things. He's got these teeth, which we can bring out. Bring those out at frame one. Uh, bring them out at frame nine. Bring them out at frame 17. So let's make the value the same. Let's go down to thief. So 1, 9, and 17 need to be the same. 13 we can delete. We don't need that. 
So these should be the same. And then at five, again, we can add a little bit of flexibility. So at five, the body is going down, so the teeth can go up a little bit. At 13, the body is going down, so the teeth can go up a little bit. Make sure it's the same as at five. And then offset that curve by two frames, just like we did. Whoops. Whoops. One, two. And now we get some bounce in the teeth as well. All right. So let's save what we've got there. File, increment, and save. And let me just see. Any um, questions? Um, uh, can you please repeat how to copy the keyframes on the other leg? Oh, dear. I'm sorry I missed you there. That was 20 minutes ago. Um, um, I'll, I can show you, but it'll mean going back. Let me just check on the... Oh, I'm sorry. Some, some of you are not keeping up. Uh, the cycle's not working. Um, yeah, it's, it's tricky in these things. Um, uh, I think if this software, if there was a little ping that alerted me to, um, uh, to the fact that some of you have fallen behind, then, then, then I'd, I'd be alerted to the fact that there's a question that needs answering. Um, but um, uh, ho hopefully you can go back through this, because this tutorial is being saved uh, by VIEW Conference. So you'll be able to access this tutorial afterwards, and you can go back over the steps. And hopefully, if I've done it nice and slow, as I hope I am, I hope I am, then uh, you'll be able to go back over this and cover the ground that went wrong. Um, how do we change camera angles, someone asks. Um, well, in Maya, you get a free camera in Maya. You, you get the perspective view for free. Um, we will, if there's time at the end, create a master camera or a shot camera, uh, and then we can have our own camera angle, which we will decide on. But for now, we're just um, uh, we're just animating in the perspective view and the orthographic uh, side view. That's what we're doing for now. Then let's see, someone else asks, is there a way I can set a key for slow walking and fast walking after the animation and done? Like if I want to change animation mid scene. Absolutely, you can speed up and slow down the spider later on. And I'll, I'll show you, if there's time, I'll show you how to do that at the end. For now, we just want to get a basic cycle working. And then I will show you how to um, speed it up and slow it down. But essentially, speeding up and slowing down the walk is just like changing any walk in Maya. It's just a question of uh, scaling your curves up or down um, to make things faster or slower. Uh, another question is, when the foot goes back to the front, do you think resetting the foot up or down would make it more realistic? Um, well, I think it has to go up a little bit, because when you when you lift your foot up in a walk cycle, you've got to lift that foot off the ground. So it has to come off the ground a little bit. Um, but like I said at the beginning, I'm not really studying real spider reference here. We're using essentially a formula to make this look good. Uh, and it's a pretty good formula. Um, but I haven't actually dug deeply into spider mechanics. So maybe it's more of a kind of cartoony walk. Can you please repeat how to copy the keyframes onto the other leg? Um, yeah, so let me just show you that again. So essentially what you're doing is if I go back to frame one and I select the first foot, that's this foot up here. So let's, let's pretend that I've just got one foot work walking here. Um, I would select that, that foot, zoom out a little bit in the um, graph editor, drag select all of these keyframes, go edit, copy, and then I would go to the second leg, that's that one there, and go, um, uh, ooh. Oh, something funny has happened there. What have I done wrong? It looks like I haven't moved the, 
I actually made a mistake. All right, I'll tell you what, let's just delete all these curves. So I'm just going to delete um, the, uh, the motion on the second foot, just to demonstrate this again. Then let's go S to set a keyframe. And on the, um, well, actually, let, let's make this nice and clean. Uh, no, no, that's good. And then drag, select those keyframes, and go edit, paste. And what we will end up with is, oh, dear me, very bad. OK, let me press Z. Let's try that again. So I'm going to drag, select the, um, the leg on the left. Press A in the graph editor, drag, select those keyframes, edit, copy, go back to the front right leg, press S, select those keyframes, edit, paste, press A, and that should work. Yeah. Okay. But now we've got to offset the keyframes. So we need to uh, make sure that uh, pre-infinity the infinity cycle curves are turned on. So we go curves pre-infinity cycle and curves post-infinity cycle. And then once we've done that, we can offset those curves. So I select that whole package of curves and move it to the to screen right by holding down the shift key with my left thumb and then middle mouse dragging one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight frames to the right. And that should give me the offset. And it does. So I hope that explains it more clearly. As I said, uh, View Conference is recording this, and I believe that it will be made available for everyone who has. Um, followed along in this tutorial. My infinity curves aren't working. How can I fix it? OK. Oh, no, wait. There was another question here at noon. Was the spider in the render animated on a curve, then the legs adjusted to touch the surfaces? Or is there another way of curving the body and adjusting the legs to suit? OK, so uh, in the render, I assume you mean Lee Caller's shot. So yes, when you put the, the spider into a set, there will be some adjustments made, needed to be made to the legs. But I'll show you how to do that at the end, because what we will do is bake our curves right at the end of the shot, so that now you've got adjustable keyframes for everything. And then you can adjust each individual leg to suit the terrain that the spider is walking over. But we'll deal with that at the end, assuming that there's time. My infinity curves aren't working, asks one person. How can I fix it? So to do infinity curves, you just take the, um, uh, the control curve, whichever one it is. Let's pick this leg over here. And then press A in the graph editor. You select all the keyframes. And you go curves pre-infinity cycle, curves post-infinity cycle. And if you can't see the infinity curves, if they're not visible, you need to go to View, Infinity. Make sure that that box is ticked down there. View, Infinity should be on. And then you should be able to see your infinity curves. OK, let's go back to the questions. So then the latest question at 12.14 is, how are we supposed to render this since if we hide the curves, the controllers for the legs are still visible. Good question. That is a very good question, and I will show you the answer. So in order to make a play blast, ordinarily, we would simply turn off the visibility on our control curves, which you can do either here with this little visibility button I've got, or just do it here under Show NURBS Curves and turn those off. But you'll see that the curves for the feet are still showing because, oh, they're polygons. So what we need to do is create a layer to hide them. So here in the Layer Editor, I'm going to go Layers, Create Empty Layer, double-click on Layer 1, and call that Feet Control Layer. Feet Control Layer. Remember, uh, no uh, spaces in Maya. You can use underscores, or you can 
camel case, which is what I've done here. Camel casing is where you're creating a capital letter at the beginning of a word there. Feet control layer, save. So now I'm gonna put the feet in the control, I mean in the layer. So I'm gonna select that one, and then holding down the shift key, select that one. Shift, 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 shift. Oops, shift, oh, it's not working. Ah, let's start again. Shift, 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 shift. And then right click in the layer editor, add selected objects, turn off the visibility, and as if by magic, they all vanish. So it's a workaround and a slightly annoying one, but you know, I'm grateful to the guy who made this rig because it's a really great little rig and it's free and it's really nice for doing spider animation. So I ain't gonna complain. As I say, I do have a version of this rig that's fixed on my own hard drive, which I use for class when I'm teaching um, at Escape Studios and also online at my school, Animation Apprentice. But uh, for our purposes, because I can't give you the rig, you guys had to download it from uh, Creative Crash or highend3d.com as it's now called. Oh, or is it? I forget what it's called. Anyway, um, it's, um, we're using the, uh, the same rig that you guys are using. So we can just turn those uh, control curves on at any time using the V button in the layer editor. So hopefully that answers the question. Okay, so there are no more questions at this point. So I'm going to keep going. So there we go, we are, we've now done pretty much everything we need to do on the spider walking. So I'm just gonna go ahead and save it. So file, increment, and save. There we go. So, spider's walking along, bibbidi bobbidi boo Now, the next thing we need to do is create an environment for this spider to be walking in. And, and now we can we can pretty much do whatever we want. Um, it's twelve twenty three, so we still do have a bit of time to kind of play around with an environment. Now I can't give you guys a set for this. We could just create um, a ground plane and animate the spider walking along the ground plane, or we could, uh, you know, animate a. Um, um, a set. So, for our purposes, I'll tell you what. Let's go and let's go to the interweb, and I'm gonna go to one of my favorite websites, which is Turbo Squid. I'm sure, some of you out there are fans of Turbo Squid. If I click on the link, it will take me to Turbo Squid, and you can download all kinds of amazing free stuff here, and it's so cool because you can get all kinds of environments uh, and really cool free sets to play around with for animation. And the one I'm going to select is called Chapel. Chapel. And I'm going to go Chapel Search. Now, by default, Maya wants you to buy really expensive stuff because they're trying to make a living like all that. So can't blame them for that. But if you want the cheap stuff, you change sort by best match to lower prices. Lower prices. So sort by best match, lower prices, and that will give you the free stuff. And this is what we want. We're after this little guy here, this chapel here. Um, and that's because it's got graves in it. <laughs> so, um, uh, so go ahead and download the chapel. You're going to have to log in. Am I in? It's like I am, I am actually logged in. Yeah. So I can, no, I won't download it because I've already got the chapel in my um, assets folder. So I don't need to download it again. But it's a nice little um, sort of Scottish or Welsh chapel. Very, very simple, nice textures, very, very low poly, won't slow down your shot. Um, um, and, a, a, and a fun little set to, uh, to work with. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and find it in my um, uh, in my assets folder, and um, 
So I'm going to go teaching assets sets. I've got loads of sets downloaded from various different places. Uh, is this rural or is this urban? I guess it's urban. Yeah, there, there we go. There's the chapel. And it comes with various textures. Um, that's the chapel. It's a .mb file. So I'm going to copy it into, I'm going to open up another window here, documents, Maya, projects, um, view spider, scenes. So that's where the spider, that's where the, 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 the chapel needs to go. So in that folder, control V, paste. So I'm pasting the chapel into that folder. And then there's various textures that I need to download. So control diffuse.tga. I'm going to control select all the TGAs, uh, the targets. Um, and those are two that I've added there for my own. Those are basically photographs I took in a local graveyard, um, which I thought I might use for this exercise at some point. Uh, but basically, we want these three T TGAs. So drop those in your source images folder. So the TGAs, because they are texture maps, go in your source images folder like that. Oh, dear, that didn't work. Delete. Move to trash. Uh, try that again. Control C. Control G. Uh, Control V to paste. Great. So um, the chapel is now uh, the source images folder. Sorry, I'll start again. The textures are in the source images folder. The Maya file, the chapel, is in my scenes folder. Let's just check to make sure everybody's been able to do that. So I'm going back to the comments. Thank you, the infinity per curves problem got solved. You can use any set for this, by the way. I'm just using the chapel because I'm just going to have a, a giant spider walking amid some graves, which is cheesy and a bit silly, but it will work for our purposes. Now, I'm going to go back to Maya. I'm going to go File, Import. Um, actually, what I want to do is save my work. Let's save what we've got to. So increment and save. Whenever you get to a good stopping off point in Maya, you always want to save your work. Then go File, Import, and I'm going to import the chapel into my shot. And if I zoom out, there we go. So the spider, now I can see, is underneath an enormous chapel, <coughs> which, by the way, if I press 6 on my keyboard, should be textured, which it is. Hooray. Um, so now I'm going to create a layer for that. So if I go Windows Outliner, I've got the um, Ra, the spider. I've got some lights here, which I don't need. I can just delete those. Uh, chapel, ground plane, and the chapel there. So I'm going to select those two objects in the Outliner and create a layer for them. Layers, create empty layer. Double click on that. I'm going to call this set layer. Set layer. Save it. Right click, add selected objects, and save that to the set layer. So I can turn that on and off anytime I want. And what I want to do is I want to check the scale of the of the spider and the set. And the set is basically much too big for the spider because I want a giant spider. So in the um, scale tool, in, in, the, in, the, in the channel box up here, under scale x, y, and z, I'm going to try scaling it down to, say, 0.3. Uh, but let's hmm, what do I do there. Windows Outliner Chapel is at 0.3. Let's make the plane nice and big. So I'm going to leave the plane at, at 1. So the plane's nice and big and the chapel is small. Set layer. Now let's move the spider. Let's turn on the um, control curves again. So show NURBS curves. So make sure those are on. And let's drag the spider away from 
the there we go so I've got my spider in the set now walking amidst the graves oh I made a mistake so it looks like I've got I've I've keyframed the um, the world control on the spider in translate Z, but it's not keyframed at the beginning. I only keyframed it at frame eleven. So let me go back to the beginning and pull the spider out at frame one, which is where I want it. Press S, and then I'll get rid of that other keyframe at frame 11. So we've now got the spider out here in infinity curves. Oh, one of my infinity curves is not turned on. I can see I've got a mistake there. Or have I? What's going on there? Oh no, it's because my timeline has changed. <coughs> so sometimes when you import a set into your shot, it changes the uh, timeline. We still want our timeline to be set to 17 so that it's looping successfully. But now I've got my spider in, amongst, in amidst the graves. And now it's time for me to um, create a camera view. Well, I'll save that. File, save scene as. Uh, spider walk, um, spider walk chapel, so we call this version five. And now, let me just go back to the comments, make sure everybody's doing okay. Uh, yep, great, everybody's good. So now we're going to create a camera view. So to do that, we go create cameras camera, create cameras camera, name it shot camera, standard industry naming convention, shot camera, panels look through selected, panels look through selected. Zoom out, zoom, zoom, zoom and find a nice camera view that works. So maybe something like this. And let's say we want, um, let's say we're gonna have four seconds of animation. <coughs> it's gonna be 99 frames, so let's set our timeline to 99. One to 99. And let's move our camera out a little bit. And one thing you always want to do is turn on your resolution gate. That's this little button up here. And I've got mine is set to 960 by 540, which is good. We might want to make some more of these graves, by the way. You can do that by, um, if you go, I won't do it now because we're, slightly short of time and I want to leave some time for questions at the end uh, but you can go under under mesh if you go mesh separate you can separate the whole mesh out and then just duplicate the graves and then you'll get you'll get lots more graves in the shot but because it's one whole mesh I can't actually move them around separately uh, because they're all part of one object <coughs> so you'd have to separate them out and then duplicate the graves but I'm just going to leave it here for now because I'm happy with that Make sure I've got my camera selected. Select the camera up there. And make sure that the camera, the set encompasses the camera. So I don't want to be looking at an infinity horizon over there. So I'm going to set a keyframe there on the camera and then zoom in a bit. So I'm kind of zooming in on my spooky spider like that. Then press play. Now I've got camera slowly zooming in on the spider. And I'm going to drag select the translates and rotates in the shot camera, right click, lock selected. Because once you create a shot camera, you always want to lock it off so you don't accidentally knock it over by mistake. 
Then once we've done that, you, and you can also do that, by the way, there's a little lock camera facility up there where you can toggle the lock on and off. When it goes gray, it's locked. Pink means unlocked, gray means locked. Um, so then the last thing to do is to add a forward translation on that world control. So I'm gonna go back to the perspective view here and go ahead and select the world control in Maya. Go back to frame one. Uh, we might want to turn the set off when we select it so that we know we're only selecting the world control, then turn the set back on. And what we want to do is have the spider take um, some steps between frame one and frame 99, such that the spider is moving forwards in 3D space, but I don't want the feet to slip. So I'm just going to guesstimate this and press S. Now, when I press play, that world control curve is going to slow in and slow out. If I, sh I can show you the curve down here, because Maya will automatically give it a, a spline offset. But we don't want spline. We want a straight curve, because remember, the, the spider has to travel forwards in Z, the precise same number of grid units that the feet are traveling backwards. And the feet are on a straight curve. Therefore, the forward translation on the world control must also be a straight curve. So if I select that and press straight up here, then the spider should move through 3D space. And I shouldn't get too much feet slipping on the ground. But I can test that if I turn off the set layer back actually I'll tell you what let's make the grid much bigger so if I go to display grid and go to grid options I can um, make the grid uh, much larger let's try 100 fly 200 fly grid lines every 20 units okay. so now the grids really nice and big and I can now see, how's that spider doing? Is it slipping on the ground? And actually, it is slipping a bit. It's, you can see, if I scrub through here, that it's traveling slightly too fast. And the feet are slipping, but not very much. So all I have to do is relax that curve, take that down a little bit. So the spider is traveling, still slipping a bit. So the spider is traveling less ground. That looks pretty good. <coughs> Spider's feet are locked onto the ground. And that's not bad. And the reason that none of the, the feet are slipping is because we use the same control curve for all the feet. And therefore, when we added a forward translation on the global control, the feet don't slip because they're all traveling backwards at the same speed. And this automatically cancels out the forward translation on the global control and creates the illusion that the spider is walking along the ground. So if I turn my set back on, go back to the camera view up there, and control curves off, turn the feet layer off, I've now got my spider walking through the grave. Spooky spider walking through a grave. So I'm going to go File, Increment, and Save. And then let me just check the questions, make sure everybody's happy. Everybody's happy. So the last thing I'm going to show you how to do is how to bake your curves. Let's turn the set off again. Perspective view. Turn the control curves back on. And... What I can do now is select the, con I'm going to shift select the control curves, and I'm going to do this carefully so that I don't select the geometry. So those are all my control curves, and you can see them down here in the graph editor. If I press A, you can see I've got a whole load of, I've got keyframes up here at the beginning of the shot, and the rest of it is just the infinity curves doing their work. But let's say I wanted 
Because somebody asked earlier on, what would happen if the spider was traveling over stony ground, something like that? You'd have to adjust the feet. Well, to do that, you need to be able to keyframe each foot, <coughs> excuse me, individually on that bit of rock or stony ground. <clears throat> and to do that, you've got to bake your curves. And what baking does is it will keyframe every single frame on every single control curve. So if I select all these control curves, make sure they're all highlighted, and then go Edit, Keys, Bake Simulation, open up the Options box, select Sample by 2, that will give you a keyframe every second frame. If you have a keyframe on every frame, it's uncontrollable, it becomes unmanageable. But every second frame will be fine. And then just hit Bake. And Maya will now bake out those curves. And now we've got keyframes on every frame. And now what I can do is select that and turn infinity curves off. Pre-infinity curves, pre-infinity constant, curves post-infinity constant. Turn off infinity curves, we don't need them anymore. We've now got keyframes on every frame, and now you can individually manipulate each one of those keyframes. So let's say we wanted to create a little rock that the spider had to walk onto that appeared under one of the feet. We could adjust that foot individually and the spider would appear to walk on the rock. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is it for today. We are done. Uh, we still have 15 minutes left. I'm just going to save my work. We still have 15 minutes left, and, uh, and we could go on with this tutorial. We could add more graves. We could add more spiders. I could show you how to animate grass blowing in the breeze. There's all kinds of fun you can have with this, um, including you know, texturing, cool looking graves with cool inscriptions and you know stuff taken from real graveyards we could make these graves more high poly because obviously they're far too low poly for a close-up there's all kinds of stuff we could do to make this more fun but we are out of time uh, and what i want to do just for the last 15 minutes is just see if um anyone has any questions so can we get your email id so that we can learn more yes absolutely um, so to find me, you can either find me at Animation Apprentice, which has my email address here, info at animationapprentice.org, that will reach me. Or you can find me at Escape Studios, um, which is where I also teach, which is um, the Escape Studios animation blog. Uh, and my email address is here. So alex.williams1 at pearson.com, that will also reach me, wearing my Escape Studios hat. Um, and those are probably the two best places to email me. Uh, you can also find me at LinkedIn. Don't forget, all animators should be on LinkedIn. If I go here, you can find me um, here. That's me, Animation Apprentice, Alexander Williams, that's my name. And you can link to me at LinkedIn. If you, if you link to me at LinkedIn, just say, you know, just add a message saying you were in on the um, view call, because I don't sometimes well, often people who I don't know um, uh, link to me, and I don't always link to everyone if I've got no idea who they are. So just say that you did my class today and I will, I will join you. And you should be on LinkedIn because it's a really good habit to get into. Uh, it's basically how people get hired these days is, is, through, um, is through LinkedIn. Um, is there, uh, so you've got email, ID, so we learned more, love the class. Thank you very much. Really appreciate you signing on. Um, is there a quick way to make it turn or walk on an irregular surface? Now, turning is a little harder. <laughs> uh, if you want to make it turn, uh, I mean, you, essentially what you've got to do, once you've got your curves baked, you've now got to adjust them. So yeah, then it becomes a little bit more difficult. Um, uh, but yeah, you kind of got to tweak individual curves and it gets a little trickier. What I've shown you how to do is a quick down and dirty cycle with eight legs, which will get you kind of 90% of where you need to go. But if you need to turn them, then obviously you've got to actually animate the, um, the thing turning. And that means you've got, to, you've got to move the body control to the right, and you've got to turn the legs. So you're going to have to do that manually, and that's going to be a little more effort than we've done today. But now you've got editable keyframes so, you know, you can do anything you want with these keyframes now. You've just got to make sure that whatever you do, you know, if you turn the body to the right there, 
um, that's in rotate Y, you've now got to you've now got to adjust all the other keyframes as well, so that so that the body is gradually turning. And then you're going to have to move the feet, and it's going to get messy. So you're going to have some cleanup to do. But but you know, not impossible. Uh, thank you very much. It was really nice. There's another. That's great. Thank you for this incredible class. I'm really pleased you liked it. Does anyone have any questions for me about the industry or about what we do at Escape Studios or about Animation Apprentice or anything out, anything else? Because I wear a number of different hats. I teach animation. I've been teaching animation for 25 years. Um, um, started off teaching at uh, CalArts. Um, I ha thank you very much for the workshop. How many years have you been know, animating professionally? So my first movie was Who Framed Roger Rabbit? So if you want to hear a little video about that, you can go to my, um, my YouTube channel. Um, oops, blah, blah, blah. It's a lip sync video, but, <laughs> but if I go to my channel there, I just did a video the other day. What was it like working on, um, who framed Roger Rabbit? And that's just a little, um, uh, little, uh, Animate little video I did about what it was like working on um, on that that film. Um, so so that was that was what that was 1987. I wasn't an animator then. I was what was called an in betweener, which was a very lowly job, inserting in 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 betweens, in um, in 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 between animators' uh, pe uh, sheets of paper because <laughs> it was all time paper back then. <laughs> That was, that was the beginning. 1987, that's where I started. And probably most of you here were not born. Uh, do you teach advanced creature mechanics? Absolutely. We do much more advanced stuff. And, and, and you know, we, particularly at Escape Studios, we're aiming for, um, uh, for the animal and creature market, you know, frame store, MPC, high-end creature work. So, yes, absolutely, advanced creature mechanics. And it really gets very heavily into live-action reference at that point where you're really looking really super carefully about what real animals and creatures do. Where can we see your portfolio? Good question. Um, again, I'm at YouTube. Um, if you go to my channel um, and click on playlists, uh, you can find dooby dooby doo my play reels. So Alex Williams personal demo reels. There's a, oops, um, that's one of my demo reels, a recent one, relatively recent. Um, and you can see, but I've got various, various demo reels. This is some stuff. This, this is a sort of general animation demo reel, but I've got various demo reels from all the different movies I've worked on. If you scroll down here, Monster House, Robots, Racing Stripes, El Dorado, Piglet's Big Movie, Thief and the Cobbler, blah, blah, blah. I've been doing this stuff for a long time. <laughs> uh, yeah. So let's go back to the queries uh, portfolio. So that's YouTube. You can also see my website, alexwilliams.com, but it's all the same stuff, really. Can the layer animation method be applied to spider animation? Absolutely, it can. You can animate in layers. That's a bit beyond the scope of today's tutorials, but yes, you could, absolutely could. How to get editable keyframes for the infinity, from the infinity cycle? Okay, so, so I probably went over that a bit quick, but all you're doing, um, if I press Z, um, all you're doing to, to get editable keyframes, you're just selecting all the control curves. You're just going, you just select the curve. So select that one, uh, shift select that one, shift select that one, shift select that one, shift select that one. Just make sure that everything is selected. Shift select that one, all the curves. I mean, all the control curves, they're all selected. Press spacebar, press A. Now, if it's already baked now. I've already done the baking. But if you hadn't baked, all you do is drag select all the keyframes and then go edit um, keys, bake simulation. And make sure that you go into the options box. Make sure that sample by is set to two. And then just press bake. And now you have editable keyframes. I think I've got a video on this at my channel, actually. Um, now it should be um, fake keyframes, Alex Williams. See if that works. See if that comes up. Mm, no, it doesn't actually. 
it's annoying. Okay, so I should do a I should do a video on that. Uh, anyway, something to add to the list. Um, how easy it to, is it to do projects and teach at the same time? Ah, oh, good question. Not terribly easy. Is the answer. So if you're working on production, that tends to be pretty much a kind of full-time job. So I'm not working on production now, and I haven't done for a while because I am teaching full-time. And I've, what I've found, especially in the UK, I don't know how things are in Italy, and I don't know where you guys are. I guess you're all over the world. But um, certainly in the UK, there haven't historically been that many great places to learn animation. So what I wanted to do both online at Animation Apprentice, but also, also teaching at Escape Studios, was to set up a really, really good place in the UK where people could learn animation at a really high level and be confident that by the time they completed the course, they would be employable as an animator. Um, and uh, I felt that that was, that was something which really needed to be done. And so that's what I've been spending my time on for the last um, uh, five, five to 10 years, five years at Escape Studios I've been. A um, little longer, eight, eight years at Animation Apprentice. Uh, what level of animation do you need to be at to be hired as a junior animator? If you can do basic walks, jumps, and rolls, is that enough? Um, I would say probably, I mean, basic walks, jumps, and rolls, that's really good these days. But you need to be a bit better than that because, unfortunately, uh, you know, the days when, when companies would want to train you are kind of over because there's so many schools now that do teach so you kind of want to be employable as a junior animator. So you're going to need to have some kind of performance stuff that are there as well. Um, so I would say, you know, um, enroll at a school. It doesn't really matter these days whether you're online or at a school, but you want to go to a place where they have a really good demo reel um, where you know that, that they're going to get you to a professional level. I mean, that's essentially what we're all about. Um, both at Escape Studios and Animation Apprentice. It's all about getting you to a professional level so that by the time you graduate, you know, you're in a, you're in a decent position to find a job. Um, and also we can help with that. You know, I get, I get people coming to me on a regular basis saying, you know, do you, I, I, we're hiring for this job. Here's the job spec. Can you put me in touch with students who would be um, good for this job? And of course, I respond to that all the time and put, put students forward all the time. Thank you for the class, says someone else. How would you transition from being a student to getting your first job? Great demo reel. It's all about the demo reel. Uh, and be at LinkedIn. So being about LinkedIn is about being easy to find. Having a great demo reel is all about uh, an employer being confident that they can, um, they can hire you. Any book recommendations for creature animation? Um, I mean, I, you know, the animator survival kit, clearly still the best book. Um, there's, there's a bunch of creature stuff in the back there, so I'd say that's still that's still the best book for um, for animating creature work. But really, creature work is all about live action reference and and and, and matching that really really closely. Um, what is my opinion on Blender versus Maya? Ask someone else. Really good question. Um, Blender is getting better and better. I mean, Blender is awesome, and Blender is free. We still teach, both at Animation Apprentice and at Escape Studios, we still teach Maya. And that is because, it's not because Maya is better than Blender. It is because Maya remains the dominant platform for animating in Maya. But Blender is nipping at their heels. And uh, one of my online students um, uh, works for a uh, Dutch company uh, doing games in the Netherlands. And they have transitioned to Blender now. So I think there is a sense in which um, Maya needs to um, watch out. Autodesk need to watch out because Blender is getting better all the time. And of course, if you're doing a freelance job, you know, you don't have to pay for the software. Uh, what's your greatest work? What am I really proud of? So I'm proud of lots of the stuff that I've done, but um, I would say that uh, most of all, I'm, I'm probably proud of, um, if we go back to my YouTube channel, where was my YouTube channel? Um, uh, I got to work on uh, The Lion King, so that was pretty cool. Um, my work on, um, if we go back to my demo reel, you know, the stuff that I did on, um, why wouldn't let me go back to this? Come on, behave. Oh, there we go. Yeah. So obviously the Lion King, um, uh, Harry Potter was really fun to work on. Uh, yeah, I mean, even this, this stuff was fun. You know, Iron Giant, man, it was fun working for Brad Bird, you know. It was great. I mean, I had a blast on that film. I didn't get to do The Giant, but I did the stuff on Hogarth. 
So I've been really lucky. I've worked, got to work on some really terrific movies and, and work with some really um, great directors. Oh, man, it was fun working on Roller Coaster Rabbit as well. That was a lot of fun, working for uh, Rob Minkoff, who directed. You're taking me down memory lane here. I'm going to burst into tears any minute now. <laughs> start, start talking about me. But it's not all about me. It's all about you. And it's all about you learning stuff and breaking into the industry and, 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 and making it. Um, do I have any advice on balancing teaching, family, and personal projects? Yeah, you've got to juggle all of them. And man, that's hard. Once you have kids, this stuff gets tough. Uh, but I will say that teaching is more easy to balance with a family. That is one of the, that's one of the reasons why I like teaching is, is the, uh, the balance between family life and, and the teaching life is, is much easier than when you're working on production. Software for 2D animation. Really good question. Toon Boom Harmony. Is the, is the one you want to learn. Obviously, Adobe Animate, because the Adobe is so ubiquitous that everyone learns Adobe, um, and everyone wants to know. Uh, and there's so many jobs out there for Adobe Animate. But the one, the really hot one now is Toon Boom Harmony. So get hold of a copy of the uh, free license and learn Toon Boom Harmony. We run evening classes in it at Escape Studios if you, if you want a formal class. Why, ask someone else, is LinkedIn so important for getting a job? I'm speeding up here now because we've only got three minutes. Any minute now, I'm going to be told to stop. Um, but no, because LinkedIn is a platform. Um, so let me um, let me go to the Escape Studios blog. I'll show you. Um, uh, just read this blog post. Uh, LinkedIn. It's because that's where everybody is. And you know, funnily enough, I learned this at the View um, conference last year uh, because one of the this really nice lady who was here on the conference with me, Tiffany Feeney, she's based out of. Um, uh, Switzerland, she does recruiting for films, and she basically lives on LinkedIn. So if you want to connect to Tiffany, which you want to be doing, you want to be on LinkedIn. There's a video. If you Google my video, why animators need to be on LinkedIn, you can hear me talking about it. But Tiffany says, I live on LinkedIn. That's where recruiters go to find talent. That's where they're looking. That's going to be your brand. So you want a great demo reel, you want to be on LinkedIn, and your LinkedIn profile needs to say that you're available for work, right? Because otherwise they don't know. Um, so, so it's all about kind of marketing yourself, making, making sure that your, your work is really good, but also making sure that you are really easy to find, easy to contact. Email address, telephone number, website, be easy to find, state that you're available, have a great demo reel, and the animation world will be your oyster. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I think that's all I've got time for. Thank you so much. It's been a real pleasure being here. Um, I'm not sure actually how to stop this thing other than just by turning it off. So what I'm going to do now is um, close it out unless anyone tells me not to. Uh, and I will then suggest that you really enjoy the, um, the rest of the VIEW conference. I love coming to VIEW. I'm gutted that I'm not there this year. I had such a blast last year and the year before that and the year before that. Uh, and hopefully, COVID permitting, I will be there next year doing more tutorials and panels and fun stuff. I love going to Turin. Uh, Maria Elena does a great job with VIEW. She gets amazing speakers. So enjoy the rest of the conference. And let's hope that next year we can all go and meet in person and have a drink in the bar and eat some of those lovely truffles for which Turin is so uh, famous. Um, Andrea says, this is Andrea from VIEW Conference. Please log off when you want. want the, tr the session will end by itself. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you for checking in. It's been a real pleasure being here. Uh, and I hope to meet all of you in person one day.